Welcome to Ebb Tide Tackle Talk. Uh, today, I'm going to take you through my thoughts around GT lures, um, from poppers to floating sink baits to sinking stick baits to uh, pencils. Um, they've all got dip- different application uh, when you might use them. There's a bit of crossover as well. Um, but there are probably some occasions when you should definitely be using one over the other. Let's take a bit of a look. We're going to start with um, we're going to start with um, probably the most commonly used uh, GT lure, and uh, it's certainly popular for good reason, and that's um, poppers. Um, even a novice can get a um, result out of a popper. Um, they're really not that hard to get a, um, a semi-desirable result from. Um, with experience, you do get better with poppers. You get better at timing the stroke to get the best result um, so that the lure doesn't tumble out of the water, um, that the, the, the splash and the, um, the shock wave that occurs underwater is optimum. And um, in rough conditions, they can be a little bit more tricky than perhaps they are when the conditions are good or come with experience. So when you're starting out um, popping, um, generally people are looking for a popper around the, um, say, 120, 130 through 150 gram range. Um, and um, they're generally looking for you know, a, a deep face popper, um, that typical bell type body. Um, as people get a little bit more experienced or potentially they're going to a big fish location um, where bigger poppers um, are considered more uh, important uh, also ne- necessary bigger to carry bigger hooks for big fish um, but here's a, probably a couple of typicals a um, Attic Venus um, popular for many years in the Coral Sea as is the um, Hero GT Mania, Um, you know, not massive poppers, easy to use, easy to get a good result out of, and um, can actually be popped with relatively soft rods. Um, Not all poppers um, can that be said for. Um, A lot of poppers you need a specialist outfit for. Um, Moving moving up a little bit, um, quite possibly um, the most popular GT popper of all time would be the Hero Kibera um, in the 120 or the 150 gram so it's, this is a um, 150 Kibera as you can see there um, immensely popular, easy to use, easy to chug um, good for pretty much all but the roughest conditions um, one of my absolute favourite poppers is the Blaze Kimitsu. It used to be called a Hita Kimitsu. Um, same maker. Um, this is a 150 gram. Um, the 150 and the 170 um, to me match any popper in the market in relation to its water displacement, its ease of use, um, the big thud you get when you, when you hit this thing right and it's pretty easy to use. Um, big, big fan. But um, if you're starting to use the 170s um, you're probably looking for a stiffer, um, purpose-built popping rod. Moving right along, um, Attic Big Buffalo, um, coming at a bit over 170 grams, um, starting to get to be, you know, decent poppers here that require um, a bit of effort and maybe a bit of skill to operate. The new Jack Finn, uh, been prototyping this for uh, probably a year or more. The new Jack, Jack Finn uh, popper just coming on the market. It's been immensely popular. Um, if you follow social media at all, um, and the Amigari Dzanga 230, they're really quite long. These um, these poppers, they've got a lot of stability through the water. Um, they move a lot of water, um, and that stability helps when the um, conditions get rough. Um, <coughs> Through to probably, um, this is almost a, a specialist popper, a full scale Long Kong. Um, generally, longer poppers have got their place um, when the water gets rough. And to uh, kind of even it out in terms of poppers, 
diving poppers have become really, really popular. Um, this is an Amagari uh, Urpakari um, 220. Um, super easy to use these things. You don't have to hit them hard. Um, they just uh, burrow down under the water surface, taking with it bubbles from this cup face. Um, splash. They do everything a popper does, but they hold in incredibly well and dive. Um, this is probably a first choice for a rough water popper um, and a great popper for a, uh, a no novice as well. So when do I use a popper? Um, if fish are active and feeding and um, I know that they're pretty much on, it's a great time to grab a popper. Um, the takes are really uh, explosive and uh, visual and if the, uh, the, the fish are on, um, the fact that a popper doesn't look like a fish doesn't seem to matter to them, they'll, they'll smash them. Um, I'm particularly keen on using a popper if I'm working over deeper water, um, over a pinnacle or a deeper reef. Uh, the popper does a really good job of calling fish up from below um, and raising them 20, 30 um, metres or even more. So a popper is a great lure to go pro prospecting when you first hit a location. Um, they're good when you've got um, energy because they do take it out of you. If you're popping particularly the bigger lures all day long, they will sap your energy. So it's a good, uh, good lure to use early in perhaps small, um, small doses, mixing it up with, uh, with stick baits. But um, particularly like them when you're working over a bit of depth in the water. Um, yep, they'll, they'll handle rough up to a point where timing the stroke gets a bit difficult with big swell, big waves. You can't see the popper when you want to make a stroke and you tend to mistime them and tumble them out of the water a bit. So in the roughest conditions, I tend to leave them um, in the boat. But um, definitely an important GT lure choice and um, wouldn't go home, it wouldn't leave without them. Uh, moving on now to, uh, we're going to have a bit of a chat about sinking stick baits. Uh, okay, so sinking stick baits have become pretty popular in GT circles um, over the last um, five years in particular. Um, they weren't heard of that much beforehand. Um, they've got a, a particular place in rough weather. Um, if seas are really big and gnarly and the currents are strong, um, a lot of these options become very difficult to use unless uh, they're in skilled hands. But a sinking stick bait, um, you know, not talking about down deep, but just below the surface, that metre below the wash, um, gets a lot of bites. Um, it's, it's away from the commotion, it's not skipping across the top and not working properly, it's actually swimming, um, even with side current. Um, and they're damn easy to use. A, a novice can get a result out of a sinking stick boat, even more so than a popper in my opinion. Um, typically they've got relatively um, flat sides, which gives them, gives them a lot of action, which is necessary when you're down a little bit. It's very easy for the action to get dulled. So um, getting down a little bit, flat sides, really, really helps the swimming action. Um, doesn't really help though with uh, casting. They can cast um, a bit of a pig, pig with the flat sides. They tend to catch the wind a little bit. It's all good if you're um, downwind or crosswind, but at the moment you've got a headwind, uh, they get a bit harder. Um, sinking stick baits tend to be worked really, really slowly. Um, and uh, there are some that you can actually basically just flat wind in without any um, angler input. Um, I and a lot of others find that pretty boring way to fish and I uh, like to add some rod beads or some twitches. Um, the, the, the view being that, uh, you know, that gets the fish's attention that it's a dying bait fish or struggling bait fish. So that's a matter for you. But um, sinking stick baits, just a few that I, I like, um, ASWB, SS185 um, has been a staple. Um, even the smaller ones, the SS130, um, SS120, they've caught bucket loads of fish for us. Probably, um, I would say the most famous would be the Orion Bigfoot 
um, in whatever size. This is a Bigfoot 180. You know, really basic looking lure. Um, resin injection molded, whatever uh, the, the process is. Heavily weighted um, along the keel. You can feel that there's a lot of lead in there. Real flat sided profile, a bit rounded at the top. Um, these things swim crazy good. Um, whilst they look pretty basic um, as a lure, um, GTs love them. Um, they've caught so many big fish over the years. Uh, the old Orion Bigfoot um, you actually cast pretty good too for a sinking stick bait um, you start to get the picture that Orions are uh, pretty good in this um, corner of the market this is a relatively new one the um, Orion GTX 170 um, there's a 130 coming out real soon for people that um, don't want to cast a lure this heavy um, that's been getting some crazy results in um, particularly in Southern Oman. Um, it's a little bit different to most sinking sticks. It's a little bit more rounded. It's, it's got some flat sides to it, but it's almost a, a more normal stick bait um, design. But um, they go really good. And this is one that's actually a bit of a personal favorite of mine, Orion again. Plug Tropic 180, um, sinking stick bait. Really weird, funky design. It almost comes down into like a V here in the belly. Um, big broad back um, but it's got like this chiselled almost vibe face um, I killed it on my last trip to No Boundaries with this lure you can see it's all well bitten up uh, I don't know, three or four monster fish out of that um, we had big seas, big um, big waves and this was just so easy to work it didn't matter whether I could see the lure or not whether we were going over a wave or in a trough just wind and, and slow twitch um, and this would vibe away and um, the fish liked it. So that's um, sinking sticks. Easy to use, great to get below the current and the wash if it's rough. And um, good for beginners, good for rough conditions. Um, yeah, all around good. Okay, moving on to probably the most purest aspect of GT casting and that is uh, floating stick baits. Probably one of the ones that uh, is most famous and in infamous is um, uh, the Carpenter Gamma, Gamma 160. Um, yes, you need a fair bit of skill to operate a Gamma um, with your rod work. Um, stick baits require a softer tipped rod. Um, no point using a popping rod with a lot of these lures, you won't get them to swim properly. It is a bit specialist. This is a bit more skilled. Um, and the gamma is probably right up there in terms of requiring uh, input from the angler and skill. Um, if it's rough, if it's um, big currents, cross winds, cross currents, not your best choice, but on its day, um, gamma catches really, really well. Um, some other stuff that we've been using um, over the years to really good effect. Um, some are a little bit easier than others, in fact. Um, pretty much everything here I'm about to show you is not hard to work at all. Um, your typical long um, sweeps with a pause, let the lure get its nose back out of the water before you then sweep again. Nose pulls in the water and the, the lure um, gets its head down and swims. That, that applies to all these lures. Um, so I'm going to start off showing you uh, this boy, bad boy, uh, Amagari Kaksu 240. Um, there's a lot of stick baits in the Amagari range. Uh, this is my favourite. It loves rough water, and for a floating stick bait, that's a good attribute. Um, I don't know if you can see there, but it's well beaten up from some quality fish. Um, but you know what? It's ready to go again. Um, nowhere near retirement yet. Um, not the biggest GT lure out there you'll find. Um, you know, it's probably about 220 mils long, not massive, but um, I love this thing and so do the fish. Um, the new Jackfin Argo 240, um, just coming on the market again, this has been prototyped over the last couple of years and it's um, gone to production. This thing's been slaying it as a floating stick bait. It, it actually goes right in rough water as well too. Um, 
yeah, super easy to use, super tough finish, and um, very durable. Um, they, uh, they they stand up for a lot of punishment. The finish on those two lures. Um, long term favourite of mine um, is the Strategic Angler Walker. Um, caught some cracking GTs on these. Um, very tough lure, very easy to work. I I I, um, I, I tend to put on um, really big hooks on this, like seven O GT recorders, which makes it barely float. Like the nose will be just just out of the water, but give it a good hard sweep. Um, it, it splashes, it'll slash on the surface before it bites in and swims. And um, that kind of action drives GTs crazy. Um, it'll, it'll really help switch them on. Um, again, they're really, really tough strategics. Um, into some, I um, don't oh know, I'll do the Ulua too. Hiru Ulua, um, worth the discussion. Um, you know, it's a shape that's been around for a long, long time. Um, the Ulu is super easy to use. Same thing, big long sweep, so you can even walk the dog. It won't break the bank. Um, here's another one that won't break the bank. Um, Attic. It's actually called the Barley Dancer. Uh, there's a smaller model called the Ocean Dancer. This is the biggest at about 170 grams. Uh, she's a bit beaten up, caught a few fish, this one. Um, in fact, my very, very last GT came on, on this lure. Um, super easy to get work. It's got a big keel down the middle. Um, it, it slices through the water, swims um, in a real zigzaggy action. For such a big lure, it can actually be walked the dog as well. Um, the final one I'll show you is a Blaze, Blaze Garage Burn. Um, beautifully crafted lures. Um, this is the 120, they go up to 160. Um, really nice foiling, a um, bit like the Gamma, really um, really swims beautifully, uh, probably not like a rough water lure, but um, in the right conditions, uh, this bad boy will get you a bite for sure, really good. Um, so when would I use a floating stick bait? Pretty much um, any time, they're my favourite lure to use, um, the boats on a floating stick are like nothing else. GTs just climb all over them. Um, they, they, they have a hard time resisting them. If I know fish are there, if I have no doubt, um, it'll be a floating stick bait that I'll be throwing about. Um, if it's shallow water, perfect scenario. If it's deep water and the fish are up and about, no problem. If, if the, the fish are being a bit harder in deep water, it'll be more a popper trying to get the fish uh, to come up and um, entice them into a bite. Okay, the final uh, lure type I'll talk about is um, skipping or popping pencils. Um, I drag these lures out when I just don't know where the fish are. Um, if you're drifting through an area that's pretty fast, perhaps a lot of current, uh, maybe you've been pushed along a lot by the wind and you're covering a lot of ground, um, slowly working a, um, a sinking or a floating stick bait, you can kind of feel like there's fish here somewhere, I know they're here somewhere, but I'm only getting covering one small part of the, the water column and not making much presence felt. Um, that's a time where I'll actually, if I'm not getting a bite, consider tying on a, um, a pencil. Um, and my rationale behind that is to cover a lot of water because I wind these pretty fast. Um, they splash, they carry on on the surface and um, I like to think that if there's a fish in the area, they're more likely to actually see uh, a lure like this um, than perhaps a, a lure that's gently swimming. Um, this should attract their attention. Um, Fisherman long pen, 170, um, hard to go past as a, um, I think it's a benchmark. Um, I haven't got one here with me, but um, here is Skipjack. Um, it actually pops as, as well as skips, um, very versatile lure. Um, Attic Pluto, slightly smaller version, yeah, it's only like a 100 gram lure. Put hooks on it, comes out to about 130, it's super easy to use. Um, you can use them off a stick bait or a popping rod, doesn't matter, pretty much hold them up on about a 45 wind. You actually get tired of these fairly, fairly quickly, um, there's a bit of effort in them. So I see these as my search bait, and that's when I'll drag them out. Um, 
there is nothing better than seeing a big GT climb over one of those because uh, they've got to do it at speed and um, yeah it's pretty cool to watch um, so that's my general thoughts on GT lure selection that's what I try to apply when I'm fishing uh, be it a new location or going back to a favourite spot um, in the next video I'm going to talk to you about um, both hook selection and um, down the track I'm going to do some swim videos so you can see what I do with the rod to get um, the action on the lure that um, we desire. Cheers and thanks for watching and make sure if you enjoyed it hit the subscribe button. Thanks.